interesting. Praise the Lord. It's daily light. And it's very, very bright. I'm trying to get a setting where we could use this camera to the best of its ability. It's been a challenge both inside and outside that we took down the little minor deck that we have uh, in our apartment. We moved our plants inside because it gets oh, a little cold here in California. Not much, <laughs> but some. And so uh, in going inside, we filmed a few devotionals and prayed about it, and waiting to see how that turns out. And now we're filming outside with high def, and we're trying to see how much bandwidth that'll use and how hard it'll be to upload. So in daily night, in testing this out and preparing to <laughs> see how well this works, hmm. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you. The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Jesus said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. By his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Peace through the blood of his cross. You know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of the Lamb without blemish and without spot, manifest in these last times for you. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your idols will I cleanse you. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. You know, as I think about the sacrifice that Jesus made, as I consider what God has done, you know, I, I think of what he said to do in remembrance of him, you know, to eat the bread and drink the wine, to do so in remembrance of him, not only because we remember him, but because it declares his coming again until he returns for us. What a wonderful tradition that should be in our lives. I know that in Calvary chapels, it's a tradition to do it on the first of the month, but wouldn't it be an honor, as most Jews do the bread and the wine on Friday night on Shabbos, to celebrate Jesus the same way as Jews do, celebrating the Friday out of Shabbat, that it would be a nice time to think about Jesus, a good time to maybe take a moment or two in your family habit of getting together to sit down at a meal, to talk, to visit, but also to, in the end, or in the beginning, share in remembrance of Jesus coming again. Because if it was so important to God that he died for our sins and that we sometimes get carried away in making the blood, under the blood, and all this blood stuff, it's such a, a big, knowledgeable thing, why not make communion? Why not make sharing just a, a cup of Kool-Aid, if you will, you know, and some crackers or, you know, bread and wine, to do it in remembrance of him? Amen, the Lord God said. Say so too. He who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. Hebrews. And he sweareth in the earth and shall swear by the God of truth. The Amen. When God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. What a long-winded word to say what it was that God had done for us in order to promise to us that by himself he would give to us 
his own word, that we could trust in him as opposed to trusting in the word of men. Because everybody knows that, you know, there's politicians who will tell you one thing, and once they get elected, they do another. There's you and I who tell our children one thing, to do as, our, as we say, not as we do. And we try to live up to the best that we can of the words that we use. But at times, sometimes our actions don't match up with our words. So God said, look, I'm going to make you a promise, and I'm not going to promise it by something that will fail you, but I'm going to promise it by something that never fails. I'm going to promise it by myself. I'm going to promise it as of my nature, of who I am. That I am immutable, I change not. So he did. He promised us that should we have faith in the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, if we would trust the Lord with all our heart, leaning not in our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledging Him, that He would direct our path, that He has given us this confidence that we can have in Him. That if we decide, and as most people won't, till some crisis causes them to, but if we sit down and decide to prove that God exists, we can. Because God promised there would be a way for us to demonstrate to ourselves that God is real. So if you have it, if you're only believing in something that you just believe because you think you should, or you're just doing it because you're religious, go out. Stop what you're doing and prove to yourself that God is real. I mean, not just for God's sake, but for your own sake. Make sure that you know what you believe in and why. Because it's not a question of some weird idea that you just say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to believe in something I can't see, touch, or feel. Rather, go out and prove that you can see, touch, and feel God, and that God is real, and that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he made some promises that he said he'd give you. If you don't do those things, then you're just missing out on the reality of what God said about himself, that you can prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, and see if I will not open up heavens and pour out a blessing upon him, not so much so about the giving part, but that if you would seek him, that you would find him when you seek him with all your heart. So, hey, you know, don't prove it, fine. Go out on your way and do your thing. But if you really want to know if God exists, you can prove it and you can demonstrate it to yourself. These things say if ye amen, the faithful and true witness. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen. Blessed be the Lord our God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name forever and ever. Amen. See, one of the things that, that's meaning when they keep using this word amen, and you always hear these people wandering around going, oh, amen, brother, amen this, amen that. What they're saying is, so be it. They're saying, let it happen according to what we have just said. Let it be accomplished, or as Jesus said on the cross, let it be finished, completed, perfected. So when people use that expression that's from Hebrew, it's more than just a word to say at the end of a prayer. <laughs> but rather it's a blessing and it's a, you could say an affirmation or a, a confirmation of saying, I agree, let me so see it in my life as it has been said now in our words. Let it be accomplished in our actions and let God reveal himself in this, what we have said amen to. So if you would, try it and see if it would be accomplished in your life. See if as obvious as the sun is shining on my face right now <laughs> and burning me. <laughs> see if you can't prove to yourself, by yourself, with yourself, that God exists, that God is real, that Jesus has revealed himself in some way, at some point in time to you, and what you do from that moment on, that's between you and the, the Lord, really. I mean, you can choose to go wherever you want to go and study what you want to study, and you know, you'll figure it out. But the bottom line is, first find out and try it, whether you go to church, whether you go to a an evangelistic crusade, whether you go to a prayer meeting, whether you go to a, a concert, whether you watch a movie, whether you watch a television program, whether you're on the internet, or wherever you are, how you are today, if you really don't know Jesus and you don't know if God exists, prove it. Prove God now. He is not going to beat you up or 
destroy you because you want to prove that he exists, but rather he wants to reveal himself to you because he wants to have fellowship. He wants to have a relationship with you. The word fellowship really means that. It means to communicate one to another. And because he's greater, he's willing to accept your attempts, whatever they may be, to contact him, to relate to him, to get to know him in a personal way. Because Jesus said that's why he came. Because he had sent his prophets and his teachers and his judges and all the different peoples that there were that we recorded in the scriptures to give us an example of what life is about with God and the fact that God exists. But then Jesus came as the Son of God to reveal the Father, to show you exactly who God is. And as he revealed himself, we began to realize that not only did the Son of God reveal the Father, but he revealed God himself. Because Jesus is one with the Father, and the Father is one with him. And so, in ways and things that you don't understand, ask God. He will speak to you. He will come to you. He will visit with you as obvious as the sun is today shining. God bless you. And I pray that you will prove God so that you're not religious, but you are about a relationship that makes your religion accurate, true, and profitable, not just to you, but to the people around you that you're going to affect with your life. Okay.